Hello everyone! I hope you enjoyed my previous video, the one with Rosendo Balinas and the honey jar incident, because here is another one of Jeremy Silman's stories. Uh, in this game he's playing against Igor Vasilievich Ivanov, and yes, that does sound like a very strong Russian Grandmaster, and uh, while he is strong, he is not a Russian Grandmaster, he is a Canadian Grandmaster. And how he became a Canadian Grandmaster is a, is a very funny story. Uh, in 1980, uh, he was sent uh, to Havana, Cuba, by the Soviet delegation to play uh, in the Jose Roll Capablanca Memorial Tournament. And after that tournament finished, uh, he was returning home, but the plane had to made, uh, make an emergency landing to refuel. Uh, the plane landed in Canada to refuel, and here uh, Igor uh, Ivanov uh, took his chance and uh, escaped. Uh, he had only the clothes he was wearing and a small pocket, wa uh, pocket chest set. And while he was being chased uh, by the KGB agents, he managed uh, to acquire political asylum in Canada. And uh, from 1980, he is a Canadian uh, citizen and a Canadian chess grandmaster. So this game takes place some nine years after this event. This is uh, 1989 and he faces Jeremy Silman. It's a tournament in San Mateo in California. And uh, as Jeremy Silman says, uh, Igor Vasilievich Ivanov arrives to this game in a near coma state. He was so drunk that uh, he was practically laying down on the board. Uh, he couldn't even move his hands. When it was time to make his move, he barely lifted his hand, made a move, and then the hand dropped back to the table. So, quite an interesting matchup. Jeremy Silman against a, a very strong grandmaster. And when I say very strong, uh, 10 years before this game in 1979, Igor Ivanov defeated Anatoly Karpov with a, with a beautiful exchange sacrifice, so, so quite a strong player. Uh, in this game Ivanov has the white pieces and he opens up with c4, uh, the English opening. We have e5, uh, the King English variation, uh, knight to c3, knight to f6 and g3 now, the two knights variation. Uh, bishop to b4, uh, we have bishop to g2, castles. Uh, d3 by Ivanov, rook to e8, and bishop to d2. c6 now, knight to f3, h6, uh, Ivanov castles, and here black should continue with something like d6, and uh, it's a perfectly fine position for black, bishop to a5 is also an idea. Uh, but here uh, Silman says that Ivanov was so drunk that he was actually considering uh, offering a mercy draw, and uh, that he really couldn't concentrate on the game. Uh, by what condition Ivano was in, and he played d5, and uh, <laughs> he considered offering him a draw, uh, but Ivano played knight captures on d5, and it was in this position that Jeremy Silman uh, realized that he's actually worse now. It doesn't matter what he does, he will, he will be worse. If he plays bishop captures on d2, uh, then knight captures on f6, and after queen captures, knight captures on d2, and uh, Silman just lost a pawn, and well, it doesn't matter how drunk Ivanov is, <laughs> he could probably win this game being a pawn up. Uh, so after this knight to d5, uh, Simon played knight captures on d5. We have c captures on d5 and the bishop captures on d2 by Simon. And uh, it's in this position that uh, Ivanov has to continue with knight captures on d2. Uh, and after c captures on d5, simply queen to b3 and uh, there is no way to defend the d5 pawn. Uh, you could play bishop to e6, but then you lose the b7 pawn. Uh, and if you if you if you push e4, if you push d4, then you lose the b7 pawn uh, by bishop captures on b7. Bishop captures, queen captures, and again uh, you've lost a pawn. So uh, a better position for white, however you play it. But after bishop captures on d2, uh, Ivanov actually played d captures on c6, and this is just bad for white. Uh, it, this is where it uh, shows that he was simply too intoxicated to, to think clearly. Uh, bishop to a5, Silman retreats the bishop, so it can't be captured. And here we had knight captures on e5. Here Ivanov is probably hoping for rook captures on e5. And here uh, white, would <coughs> white would in fact be okay after c captures on b7. Uh, threatening to capture the rook and bring up a queen. So after bishop captures, bishop captures, uh, knight to d7 bishop captures rook queen captures uh, and rook to c1 uh, you would have uh, Silman would have two pieces for a rook but uh, Ivano would have three pawns extra so white is definitely not worse here probably somewhat even better uh, but after this knight to e5 of course Silman doesn't capture the knight he plays knight captures on c6 and here we have knight captures on c6, b captures on c6, and bishop captures on c6. Uh, Ivano is now attacking both of Silman's rooks. But here comes bishop to h3, attacking the rook on f1, and the rook uh, doesn't have anywhere to go. e1 is covered by the bishop on a5. 
Uh, here he plays queen to a4. Uh, a better move than queen to a4 would have been to capture the rook by bishop captures on e8. Uh, but after queen captures rook to c1, as there is no way you can save the rook, uh, black doesn't even have to capture it immediately. He can play something like queen to a5, centralize the queen, attack the pawn on b2. Uh, after white defends this, now you can capture it. After king captures, uh, attack the pawn on e2, for example. Uh, pawn to e3 and now queen to d5 attacking the a2 pawn and also threatening queen to h1 check grabbing the h2 pawn uh, Black would be a lot better here even if uh, even if uh, Ivanov played the best continuation uh, But after bishop to h3 he played queen to a4 Some I don't know probably with a double attack uh, on, on the rook on e8 and also uh, Maybe to harass this bishop on a5, but it, it doesn't seem like a clear move uh, Silman simply played rook captures on e2, we have queen to d1, now the rook on a8 is still attacked and the rook on e2 is attacked, but bishop captures on f1, now the bishop is protecting the rook on e2, king captures, and now comes the unfortunate move for Ivanov, rook to e1, check, here Ivanov loses his queen, queen captures, bishop captures, now bishop captures rook, queen cap, sorry, uh, first bishop captures on f2, uh, kind of with a tempo, uh, king captures and queen captures bishop on a8, uh, after rook to d1, queen to d5, d4, queen captures, rook to d2, and queen to d5. Uh, it is in this position that uh, Igor Vasilyevich Ivanov resigned the game. And uh, Jeremy Silman says that Ivanov was laughing as he resigned the game, but he was uh, Silman was not very happy with this game, as uh, he does not consider this to be uh, a win against the Grandmaster, rather than... Uh, he unfortunately had to face a very drunk Igor Ivanov. So this isn't the only instance. Jeremy also uh, mentions one instance where <laughs> Ivanov was also playing against one player uh, and he also poured out uh, a thermos bottle either with coffee or with tea and uh, he spilled it all over himself and he started uh, jumping all around uh, yelling how hot it was. And uh, I've actually read a couple of other stories about Igor Ivanov where he you know, drops a rook or a piece uh, due to the fact that he was drunk. So, you know, seems like Igor Vasilyevich Ivanov really, really enjoyed life in Canada. So, uh, do you have any experiences similar to this? Have you ever played a, a chess game while intoxicated? Or maybe you faced a, a, an opponent who was drunk and uh, how was the experience? Uh, I myself didn't play against a drunk player, but I did face a hangover player. A player who was hangover and uh, he was really nervous the entire game. He was higher rated than me, uh, but uh, he was really nervous and his, his face was still pink from all the alcohol. And he offered me a draw like on move 15, I declined the draw and he was very unhappy that I declined his draw offer. And uh, a couple of moves later he again offered me a draw, I declined it again because I saw uh, his position wasn't bad, he was maybe even better, but I saw he was too nervous. And uh, then he said to me during the game, which is not allowed, he said, now I will have to defeat you. I said, okay, man, sure, no problem. And uh, a couple of moves later he blundered and I won the game. So... Not not facing a drunk opponent, but he was clearly hangover and probably waiting to have some more alcohol. Uh, but I got my win and he probably got his uh, alcohol that he was looking for. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed the game and the story. Uh, a lot of stories by Jeremy Silman. Like I said, he's a very successful author. And I am interested if you had any similar experiences like this. Do share in the comments. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Cosma Mostek, uh, Luke Grand Mason, and Andrew Tulok for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon. And for those of you wondering, uh, I will very soon upload uh, the subscribers' video with their uh, videos and photos, and I will uh, soon start doing subscribers' games. Uh, but um, I do have some things to figure out first, uh, probably probably in two weeks I will start because I'm visiting Germany in a week. Uh, I'm going to Bad Piermont for a week, so uh, I, I'd feel bad if I started now and then not to do it for a week and then continue. So better to do it uh, when I get back and then do it continuously. So yeah, uh, that's the game, that's the update I wanted you to have, uh, and like I said, I will see you soon.